No doubts. There is no game that has so big an active modding stage as Skyrim has. And obviously, as Skyrim is currently still the latest Elder Scrolls game, it is modding stage is the most active. That's just logical. Because of this, most of players are used to seeing that modding stages for previous Elder Scrolls games, like Oblivion for example, are not active and you most likely can't find anything really interesting or game-changing there. Especially now, in 2018, 12 years after game release. Welcome folks, I'm Simitar and today I'm here to show you the reality of Oblivion modding stage that can surprise you in a very good meaning. In fact, Oblivion modding stage is not just active, but it is really active and even today there are a lot of mods in active development that can literally blow your mind because they are either or really game-changing or DLC-like in size and make you to remod and replay Oblivion right now. Let me show you just few of them. All the pictures you are seeing now are in-game screenshots, and what if interesting, all these shots were taken even without EMB. This mod is called Oblivion Reloaded, and what is great, it is compatible with EMB by making just a few simple tweaks. This one and EMB are working great together, complementing each other in order to create an absolutely stunning visuals. Oblivion Reloaded has some features that even EMB doesn't have, and some same features but done even better than in EMB. Full list of features is just amazing. HDR, anisotropic filtering, real-time distant grid adjustment, great anti-aliasing, infinite view distance, increased grass draw distance, several absolutely new water shaders, as well as grass, skin, terrain and shadow shaders, and even volumetric fog. Do you think that's all? Oblivion Reloaded improves not only graphics directly. How about real mounted combat? Fully animated door wielding. Equipment mode that allows you to equip multiple items, place shield on your back and so on. And once again, with all proper animations. How about real dodging and awaiting jumps? Or maybe absolutely immersive first-person camera that even reacts on your own movement. Or maybe low HP visuals and sounds. And that's not even close to a full list of these incredible mod features. Oblivion Reloaded is a complete game changer to Oblivion graphics and animations. In addition, it has its own memory patch that drastically improves game stability, and absolutely all features can be enabled or disabled and tweaked to fit absolutely any taste, and once again, it is compatible with EMB, resulting in absolutely breathtaking graphics. For you though, the road is long and dangerous. Now, give me your hand. Remember me 
and remember my words. This burden is now yours alone. You hold our future in your hands. You... you don't remember these dialogue lines, right? And yes, it is not your imagination or bad memory. That's a mod called Oblivion Uncut, which restores hundreds of contents that was in the game initially, but was removed for some reasons. The scene is Oblivion Uncut does not add some new stuff based on lore or something like that. It literally restores cut content, which means it is a 100% of original game that was missing. This also means that if Oblivion Uncut restores a quest, for example, it will be fully voiced and so on. Take a brief look on just a few from many dozens of restored scenes. All your charging needs. All your charging needs for a very small charge. <clears throat> All your charging needs for a very small charge. I can get your magic. Good to see you. I hope I. You don't just barge into people's homes, you know. Wait, you're not here about the ogres, are you? Hmm, if so, word about my work must be spreading. Why, you're not interested in ogres too, are you? I find them simply fascinating. Most people dismiss them as monsters, but I think that's too rash. Did you know that ogres are actually very closely related to the enlightened races? I don't have the source on me, but I assure you, it's true. Vampires, mythical creatures and children of night. Vampire gameplay was pretty disappointing in both Skyrim and Oblivion. You became a powerful creature with unique abilities, a mythical monster and what? Got just some attribute bonuses and literally several spells that were actually just a usual illusion and mysticism spells, just with another names. The spells were also mostly useless, because shared common Oblivion spells problems, like Reign of Terror, which maximum affected level of creature was 6, and so on. You never was able to get what you really expected from playing a vampire. How about to change that? Neck Animals Awesome Vampire Mod Yes, while having really narcissistic name, this mod is really absolutely awesome. And it changes vampire gameplay from A to Z, drastically expanding it from big features to the smallest immersion details, like ability to feed on animals, tame beasts, control people and so on. First of all, it greatly improves all hunger stages, giving more realistic bonuses and drawbacks, while giving more unique abilities to each hunger stage. For example, well-fed vampire receives no sun damage and completely looks like a usual human until he shows his nature intentionally. Well-fed vampire is also full of energy, which reflects in better physical attribute bonuses. Hungry vampire has lower bonuses like strength or endurance, but higher bonuses to speed and feather, for example, also receiving more damage from sun. Famished vampire has its physical attributes drained but instead 
gaining huge speed, acrobatics, magicka bonus, increased sense of blood and so on, showing the great hunger and addiction, everything to hunt the closest target as fast as possible. The last stage of hunger is Eternal Vampire. What is vampire without blood? Yes, it's nothing, a shady ghost. At this hunger stage, your character completely transforms into ghostly form, having no combat skills at all, but in return receiving abnormal bonuses to speed and acrobatics, magicka, senses and almost complete immunity to physical damage. In addition, it has unique powers available only at this hunger stage. Vampire Age and Ranks – yes, you heard it right, that's a completely new feature that goes alongside with the hunger stages, but it is permanent. Each time you feed, you receive a blood point. The more blood points you have, the higher your vampire rank will grow. Vampire ranks are Fledgling, Caitiff, Adult, Mature, Elder, Ancient and Antediluvian. Seven ranks spread from 1 to 250 blood points. What vampire ranks give you? First of all, and of course, bonuses to stats and skills, as well as bonuses to armor, vampires have a hard skin, and increase passive health, magicka and stamina regeneration at night with each rank. Secondly, the older you become, the more rare you can feed before becoming hungry, but at the same time, when becoming an elite, noble vampire, you have some limitations on who you can feed, like an aesthetical taste. Almost each rank is improving your social status in vampire society, yes, yes, society heard it right, and giving you new, unique powers. Vampire Age system is simple, but absolutely immersive feature that actually gives you a reason to play as vampire, progressively becoming more and more powerful. New powers. First of all, Vampiric Senses received improved visual shader and became a toggable power. You can enable or disable it anytime by pressing the V key. Sleep through keyhole, ethereal hunger stage only, allows you to open any lock or door no matter how hard it is, only if it does not require the direct key. Blood rush, starting from Kaitif rank, self buff that increases your hunger level by one stage instantly, but in return giving you just huge bonuses to combat abilities, resistances and regeneration. Violent feed, starting from adult rank, an attempt to feed directly in combat, which can also lead to incapacitating the target, but cost you noticeable amount of stamina. Freak attack, starting from major rank, already a terrific skill that allows you to sleep through the time and space, instantly teleporting behind your target back and landing a devastating blow on him. To perform freak attack, you must be empowered by blood rush. Pest control, starting from the elder rank, you can control unlimited amount of rats to follow you and attack your enemies. Chronosphere, starting from ancient rank, focusing your mind on target in your point of view, you can instantly teleport there through the void portal. No building or mountain cliff is a problem for ancient vampire. Deluvium available only at the last antediluvian rank. Approach a sleeping person and silently give him a little drip of your blood, making him your personal troll. Trolls are fully functional followers and you can have up to three of them at the same time. This also gives you unique immersive abilities. For example, if your troll is a god, you can command him to forget about your fine, if you have some. You think that's so? Hell no! This mod also introduces two vampire clans. You can choose one of them to join when your vampire rank will be high enough, and these clans you can not only communicate and trade, but even receive quests. For example, remember Lord Leviticus, vampire father of the Grey Prince? Well, let's say you can see an absolutely different part of his story. Neck Animals Awesome Vampire mod is absolutely badass vampire overhaul that will give a new breath, <laughs> if we can say so about vampires, to your gameplay. Skeleton Boss, Sunker Tor Blade Zombies, Skeleton Mages and Frost Giants near Bruma. Absolutely possible with Mascar's Oblivion overhaul. In addition to Giants, Norls, Giant Spiders, Mummies, Eidolons, 
and literally dozens of new creature types and bosses, leading to hundreds or even thousands of new encounters. So, MOO, abbreviation to mod name, is just a big creature mod? Hell no, my friend. It is much more than you can imagine. MOO is a complete oblivion overhaul that is so interesting and huge that it can be compared to such giants without any exaggeration like Requiem for Skyrim, for example. To have a better understanding of what I mean, take a look at this. That's a brief mod readme, a short user guide that contains 58 pages. Let me show you just some of new features in Maskar's mod. Adventurers travel in the Cyrodiil. They all have different level and skills, and if your level and speech skill will be high enough, you can persuade them to travel with you, acting as fully functional followers. Backpacks for additional carry weight. Fully working crafting system, mine ore and minerals, find feeders and arrow shafts, welkin vines, place anvil anywhere to craft weapons and armors, use your tinker tools to craft arrows and lockpicks or even build your own home. Creature taming. Use Herdos Crook in attempt to tame many types of animals, having success if your speech skill is high enough. You can feed them, level up and use as followers. Improved combat and AI. Many spawns are now dynamic, so you won't be able to predict a place of usual static spawn. Combat is more aggressive in overall. Enemies can cast chameleon spells to fade from your side, stagger you more actively and so on. Enemies can now follow you through doors in big groups, not by one only. Variable lanterns for both player and NPCs. New factions and faction wars. Now there are a lot of warring factions, rebels and clans, which are also joinable. You can join Skyrim invaders or Valenwood rebels, progress through their ranks, or do the same as member of Imperial Legion, for example. Take action in massive battles and even fort sieges. New quests and notice boards. Skill-based equipment system. Now you need to have a decent skill level to equip better armors and weapons. Spells and creatures variety. Summoned Remoras can be most male and female, but my favorite part is Summoned Undead. Zombies and Skeletons will have their racial details of Skeleton based on the region when you summon them. Traps and Log Bashing. Got no lockpicks left? No problems, if you have enough strength, you can force bash the lock. But be careful, as many locks are now protected by dangerous traps. You can try to disable them with high enough security skill and agility. And if you are a master thief, you can even for example take the poison from the trap after disarming it. Unpredictable encounters, ambushes while waiting, ambushes while fast traveling, and even vampire attacks while sleeping or elsewhere thieves stealing your gold. This mod also adds tons of various small but absolutely immersive features. You can meet rats with glowing visuals, meaning they spread aerial diseases, feign death in critical situations, notice birds flying in the cities, and so on. Enchanted weapons are now looking really enchanted and when fighting a zombie, well, be careful and don't forget to pick up its brain from the body. If you'll forget, you may face this. At this moment, I have listed briefly only a very small part of the mod. Its effect on Oblivion gameplay is just enormous. It's literally the biggest gameplay overhaul ever made for Oblivion and one of the biggest gameplay mods ever made for Elder Scrolls series in common. There is one more great scene about it. It is really huge, so obviously you may like or may not like many of its features. Literally all mod features can be enabled, disabled and numerically changed in any file, allowing you to make this amazing mod fit your taste completely. Lame. And no, I'm not talking about Mass Effect Andromeda or Creation Club. Lame which stands for less annoying magic experience, is maybe the most game-changing magic overhaul for Oblivion. 
Remember when you are Oblivion Magic, shield spells that last like 20 seconds, the fear spell that cannot affect any high level creature, mysticism, well, what is mysticism about at all, and so on. Less annoying magic experience fixes all the silly, underpowered, irrational flaws of Oblivion magic system, making it much more rewarding and adds a lot of new features. First of all, you are now starting with apprentice spells instead of useless novice spells. In magic schools you have chosen during class creation. When you will leave the sewers, you will notice special spells for each magic school you have. When you cast it, you are offered a choice of which spells you want to have as a starting ones. All existing spells were balanced and improved. Buffs time was made longer, illusion spells can affect higher level creatures, summon creatures level can scale with yours and so on. For example, when you are expert in conjuration, you can summon up to 3 minions. Also, here is their level demonstration when player level is 15. Mod also adds dozens of new spells and many new spell merchants. New spells are really useful, for example, you can choose so-called circle destruction spells even at the game beginning to deal with multiple enemies. Similar to Skyrim, you can now find the spell tomes in world space or loot from enemies and learn new spells using these spell tomes. Lame is a complete overhaul to Oblivion's magic system. It is lightweight, but all embracing at the same time, greatly balanced and improves mage gameplay drastically. That's all for today, my friends. This video was pretty special for me, and I'm happy if you saw some stuff you never knew about before. Enjoy the games, enjoy the mods, and don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.